Hi, and welcome to Talking Sense. My name is Waidaka Gatumia, and there's a problem that I've been trying to deal with. In fact, that's why I've even brought out the whiteboard so that we can have a, a real discussion. We have a problem because we have a wrong impression of what it would take to achieve our financial goals. Let me illustrate that. So Alvin, Alvin came to see me. And Alvin asked a couple of questions. He said, today I'm earning about 100,000. That's in Kenya shillings. In US dollars, 100,000 is what? About $1,000 a month, okay? So he's earning 100,000 and he's saying, well, that, I want financial freedom. And so I asked him, what, what do you think financial freedom is? I, I just, I don't want to have to work. And I said, that's right. At Syntonomy, we define financial freedom as, or wealth as the ability to live the lifestyle that you want without having to work. So we said, let's form this as a benchmark. So Alvin, let's say this is your lifestyle cost, your current lifestyle cost. That's 100K per month. Yes? And I said, this is your lifestyle. This is, this is what, if you had this per month right now uh, from investments that were paying you, then you'd find financial freedom. Isn't that right? So he said, yeah, that's good, that's good. Okay, so let's work that out. What does that mean? That means 100 uh, in K per month, that's 1.2 million per year. Why are we doing it per year? Because most investments will give you an annual rate of return. They'll tell you um, you get 5% per year, 10% per year, all those various things. So now you can say, if Alvin had an investment that was paying him 1.2 million shillings per year today, then he'd be financially free because he'd be able to live the lifestyle of 100,000 shillings per month with the income that was coming in, all right? So then the question is, what kind of investment would give us this? What kind of investment would do that? So Alvin said, ah, come on, we're Kenyans. And in fact, in Africa, that's a huge investment, real estate. I want to, I want to get real estate so that I can rent. So we said, okay, let's look for the options. Of that. What kind of real estate would give us this? So we looked into the market and we said, if Alvin had 24 million invested in real estate, this is rental, and he had all the tenants in those rental apartments that he had, this would give him an income yearly, because we're talking about in, in Kenya, in Nairobi, you're talking about 5% return on your rental property. And that's if you have everybody in there. So 5% of this, and it'll give you that exactly 1.2 million shillings. So I asked Alvin, do you have rental property worth 24 million? He said, no, I don't. Okay, so we start working towards this. And then he said, okay, when, when do you think you'll get there? When do you think you'll get to this point? I don't know. So let's make it a plan. Alvin is now 40 years old, and he's saying, by the time I'm 60, I want to be able to retire. And when you retire, it means that you have income, even if you don't work. It's the same thing as wealth. So we said, okay, if you're 40 and you want to retire when you're 60, so we have 20 years to plan. But you see, this is the thing about financial planning. This 24 million doesn't remain the same over a 20 year period. So you have to adjust for inflation. And so what did we do with Alvin? We said, okay, if you're going to go into real estate, then this real estate will also be appreciating in value. In 20 years, what will it be worth? Let's assume, let's assume 10% inflation. Let's assume 10% inflation. That means this has been inflating at 10% every year for the next 20 years. What, that, that, what does that give us? This 24 million now looks like 152,880,000 in 20 years. So this now becomes Alvin's target. And he now needs to figure out how do I get to this level? How do I get to an investment in real estate that's going to give me a return of about 5% that will make sure that in 20 years I'm earning the value of 100,000 shillings per month and I can live the way I have been living without any, any compromise. So what happened now? Alvin now looked at me and he said, what? That's a massive figure, 152 million shillings. 
What am I going to do? So first of all, we started saying real estate. There's an issue here because real estate will only give you a return of 5%, at least what we've seen on average here in Kenya. So it's not a huge rate of return. So the value of the property is going up, but there's no cash flow. So we started now talking with Alvin and we started looking at his options and we started saying, when you get to that point, what if you went into the bonds market? And there you're looking at a return maybe of 10% plus. So that now this maybe can be divided into two. Instead of earning 5% of this, 10% of half of this. So now his investment now becomes more interesting. What if he started a business? Or invested in business? These two, you're talking about the same thing through the stock market or through himself doing that kind of work. The rate of return can even go higher than this 10%. What if Alvin looked at other options in the market like SACO? SACOs tend to do pretty well in this country. If they're well managed and they have a, a, a good rate of return, easily they can get to that 10%. So instead of having all this money because he has to have this in real estate, 152 million, if he has a better rate of return, then the investment becomes a lot more real. Now, here is the difference, and I want you to pay attention to this. Alvin is working towards a target now. And if that target is extremely clear, then he can make the choices as to where he's going to invest. If he's going to say that I'm going to save I told Alvin, there's no way to achieve it through just saving. Because your savings account will give you a return maybe of less than 5% now. So you have to look, Alvin has to look for investments that are going to give him the best rate of return to give him the best chance of achieving this goal. That's why financial planning has to be strategic. Every time someone comes into the Centonomy 101 class, we break it down like this according to your goals. After we had finished this whole plan with Alvin, you know, he looked back and he said, but you know, we are planning for a lifestyle of only 100,000 shillings per month. But that's not what I want. I want to drive a better car than the one I'm having, to live in a better house, to travel more, and that will cost more than 100,000 that I'm talking about. So the plan had to change. Guys, it's no longer worth it to just be putting money into buying plots, haphazardly putting money into your shares market, haphazardly saving in your circle. If you want to achieve the financial freedom that Alvin was talking about, it must be strategic. I'm no longer going to start talking about, oh, just start trying and doing this. No, come to the 101 class because it will open your eyes to the opportunities that are in front of you. Have a look at some of the testimonials and we'll put them in the link here and also on the screen here. Look at the testimonials of people who've come through this program and see how they've had a target. They put down a target. They put down a target and said, you know what? I have 20 years within which to raise 152 million. What must I do today? And they started working out how do I use debt? How do I use investment? How do I, which investment is right for my goal? This thing is simple, but it's not easy. Because in a couple of weeks, in a couple of days, you can be able to work out the mathematics. But the discipline over this 20 year period of time and understanding the right investments is where the change will happen for you. It's not a haphazard choice. Come to the 101 class, we'll open this up for you. Guys, it's only, it's especially during this time. It's less, less than 50,000 bob, but the investment will save you millions and earn you millions in the years to come. See you in class.